Uh, it is bigger than I can imagine. Like, uh, we were talking, it's like, uh, we did a crazy thing getting this place. just closed like a little bit ago we've been walking around and uh, wanted to give a tour of the place it's pretty cool uh, it is bigger than I can imagine like uh, we were talking it's like uh, we did a crazy thing getting this place um, really crazy thing so it's pretty honestly it's very exciting but just shutting the door here on the shed. It doesn't really shut, so. It's close enough, I guess. Um, gosh, yeah. Where to begin? Um, so, that's our house back there. You can see it. It's a cool house. And, uh, yeah, here is about what you can see. That barn is not ours, of course, that's the neighbor's. But it's all of that. Now behind there, that's water. Uh, well water. Yeah, basically all of that. It's pretty exciting. I wanted to just like, kind of go down, kind of show you where the plans are gonna be for the garden and stuff. And then we'll probably do, I'll probably do some like, little videos about different aspects of the farm and stuff, what we're planning. But right now, so there's two possible places to put a garden. Um, the first is actually right here by the house. You can kind of see it behind me. Um, basically, it would go from where I'm standing to where those cars behind me are. Uh, and then, like, you can see it. We got, you know, kind of basically to those cars and then all the way to this, this far fence line there. Um, so it's a pretty good amount, about an acre, acre and a half tops. And then um, the other option is to put it like down at the end of the property because um, it's a lower water table by 30, 40 feet maybe. Significant, right? Um, So it's pretty cool. Cows are out. They uh, are hanging out in the creek. They just stand in the water, which is kind of hilarious to stay cool. Um, yeah, we uh, noticed quite a bit of blackberries, uh, like you would expect in kind of the more riparian areas. Um, they're very good. I have literally never eaten a blackberry that had such concentrated deliciousness. Um, as the ones that we were just picking that were ripe. Probably in the next week or two, a lot will become more ripe and we will have delicious treats, I guess. Um, yeah, so this, let's see. I think I should do, if you can see, there's quite a lot like behind me there. You can kind of see there's quite a lot of like tree groves. Uh, so that's kind of why we picked the name Sacred Groves. I'll probably do not right now because we're fixing to go uh, it's like late we're fixing to go back home and eat some dinner and hang out probably buy some boots um, and uh, yeah I want to like kind of take you to the different groves and show them um, kind of what we intend on doing it's pretty cool So I think this is where the original garden was. Yeah, you can see like they put in spigots here for irrigation, but like we are a lot lower here than the house. Like you actually can't even see the house from here. That's how low we are. 
And so to take advantage of the lower water table, this is where the original garden was. I think this was all row crops, which is kind of interesting. But yeah, you can see how like, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of prickly stuff starting to take over here. The succession is happening. Um, which is okay. Honestly, like, this place needs more trees. I don't really know how many more. This is something I've been wondering. Um, what the responsible number of uh, large shade trees per acre is, right? What's that magic number? I know uh, uh, Bill Mollison used to talk about um, growing like acacias and mesquite and carob at 25 per acre. Maybe he meant hectare. He certainly meant hectare. If he meant per acre, that's practically covered. Um, but uh, yeah, so maybe he meant per, he per hectare. But I don't know, you know, that was a long time ago. Permaculture has uh, come a long way since the 70s when it was just a scrappy bunch of Australians. So this is the sacred grove, the most sacred. Um, you can see the size of this tree, or maybe you can't, but uh, let me just back up to it. It's wider than I am. Oh, that's a bad angle. Anyway, it's wider than my arms are um, at its widest point. So you can kind of see around. This is, uh, I think we're kind of call it ancestors, our ancestor grove. This is where we'll all be buried when we die, my family. And we will grow mighty trees at the heart of the property. There are a couple other groves that I plan on sharing, at least now, you know. And uh, with the intent of them being sacred places, for ritual and whatnot. Um, yeah, this here, look at this, right? All these things. Ooh, butterfly. If I'm not mistaken, these are all uh, either sunflower, some sort of sunflower, if I imagine, if I remember. This area here must have been disturbed because this is the only place it grows like this. Um, either that or nothing ever comes down here. But, uh, yeah, that's actually the fence line there. Right at the base. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like, it's pretty cool knowing the place that you'll be buried at in this grove of ancient oak trees. So supposedly somewhere down here there's a fence. And there's this little triangular part. You can kind of see the cross fence there. That's where the military base starts. Um, and supposedly, somewhere around here is a fence, or a gate. And the guy who, the old man who converted all this to a farm, uh, he had a, <laughs> he was like bourbon and cigar buddies with the colonel. And I guess they grew up together. And uh, they would, they let him manage this little triangle. And like, they just kind of let him hang out. Um, so, but you know, old men, they do that thing they do. And uh, who knows now, right? It could just become derelict. But uh, there's a really great grove in there that I wouldn't mind exploring. Looks like two groves. That one's huge. This is my new home. It's like crazy. It hasn't really set in. How uh, big this is. Boy, this paddock is sure, could sure use mob grazing. I mean, it's about to go to, you know, it's about to take off in the wrong way. So I do have a, th I did have a thought of maybe I should put the main crop gardens here. The thing is, this is so far away. Like, 
as far as you can get from the house, actually. <laughs> um, and that, that sucks, right? Because, you know, you don't really want to be out here. You don't have to drag stuff from the house out here. The barns, the infrastructure is all on the other side. Like, it doesn't make a lot of practical sense, but it does make ecological sense. I'm entering a mentorship program with a good friend of mine who's, well, been at this a lot more than me. Um, soon. Basically, like, once we move, once we get all the stuff moved over, it's so like June, late June. Uh, we're gonna start um, and basically the rest of this year I'm gonna spend designing this property and viewing it being out in it every day watching it change and uh, sorry just dodging a tree here <laughs> and yeah just generally learning how to be a steward of this place oh yeah I think this is it Yeah, this is it. Wow. So this place is like, it's gonna go, it's gonna go to scrubland. Like, soon. Um, it is overgrown. A lot of thorny things. A lot of tall standing, uh, dead, weedy tree things. It's, it's savable now. This would be a great place to like bring in some goats. I didn't actually want goats. Now that I spent a little bit of time here, I think I actually could benefit from some. I don't know if you can see, but it's like noticeably more thick and woody. pile. So this is the most remote grove. Here. These are practically thickets. They're so overgrown. Ooh, a lot of blackberries. Flower blackberry vines. Yeah, look at this. This is just like Some pretty desperate need of clearing and cleaning up. These thickets are just holding on, really. Muscadines everywhere. It's actually very cool right here though, so I can't appreciate that. So that hawk I saw the other day, it turns out it's a Cooper's hawk. The reason that I know it's a Cooper's hawk is because there isn't a hawk that gets that big that isn't the Cooper's hawk. It is bigger than I thought. It may as well, and I guess I'm saying it, it is a she for sure. She may as well be the size of a human. Wingtip to wingtip. She is a big predator. Her legs are the size of my forearms. Um, it's just really incredible. All right, after recording the world's most long, longest, world's longest and most rambling blog, <laughs> we're sitting down here for um, a beer, and then we're probably gonna go get some food. This is from my neighbor, like across over there. He's the cheers. He's the <laughs> son of the lady who sold it to us is the daughter of the people who own this place um, and he has a brewery so as part of our signing present she brought us a six pack I actually like this Me too. I don't really like beer she, she never drinks beer it's a company 910 Fish